Here's how to cut commuting by 23%. I'm Steve Rainey. Today we're going to cover four topics. The huge problem, the radical solution for the problem, breakthrough technologies, and some of the psychology behind the solution. And thanks to U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for supporting some of the research in this presentation. Our huge problem is to reduce greenhouse gas from driving. We are not tracking to hit our 2035 Kyoto Accord targets, and we're not anywhere close. So it's important for the U.S. to show some leadership in this area in such a manner that we create jobs and in a politically serious manner. So we have to reduce greenhouse gas from driving because transportation is 28% of all greenhouse gas. And this solution will cut 50 million tons of CO2 per year. The Moving Cooler report states that we need to combine increases in fuel economy with driving reduction. Fuel economy increases alone won't get us where we need to go. To reduce driving, we need to increase the price of driving, which will reduce the demand for driving. In Europe and Asia, gas prices are much more expensive and there's much less driving. The Moving Cooler report suggests that a major increase in the gas tax will produce much less driving. But the problem is that it's politically impossible to raise the gas tax by any amount. California has implemented a modest cap-and-trade program, but that will have much, much less impact on driving than this solution. Our radical solution to this huge problem pertains to parking. 91% of U.S. commuters have free parking at their workplace, but employers are paying about $7 per day for each parking space and then giving that away and there's no benefit to bikers, so in essence we have a perverse climate hurting subsidy in place. So the solution is to charge SOV, that's single occupancy vehicle commuters, $2 a day to park at the workplace and provide $4 per day incentives for people to take alternatives such as transit, carpooling, biking, or telework. So we'll start with a quarter charge and half dollar per day incentive and increase it gradually every four months so slowly cook this solution to gradually change commuting behavior. And California State Senator Alan Lowenthal made some important comments on parking. Eliminating subsidies for parking has enormous potential to reduce traffic congestion and greenhouse gas by reducing VMT, where VMT is vehicle miles traveled. If drivers must pay the true cost of parking, it will affect their choices on whether or not to drive. In the short term, changes to parking policy can reduce traffic congestion and greenhouse gas more than all other strategies combined, and they are usually the most cost effective. Thanks for that, Senator Lowenthal. The Bay Area Metropolitan Transportation Commission has provided a supporting letter for this radical solution. And they pointed out where parking is free, SOV is high, and transit is low, but where you have to pay to park, SOV is low and transit is high. And in the U.S., there are two corporate outliers that provide free parking, Google and Microsoft, where they have low SOV. But both spend considerable money on commuting benefits where less profitable firms can't match that level. And in fact, traditional corporate trip reduction programs are ineffective. Two other organizations provided supporting letters for this radical solution. Silicon Valley Leadership Group focused on economic benefit pointing out that a dedicated new large funding stream was created for Silicon Valley uh, transit and commute alternatives. In addition, more than 2,000 acres of surface parking can be freed up for profitable real estate infill development. Sierra Club stated that we must price parking to fight global warming, and they were enthusiastic about the small increments and small starting level because it is so extremely difficult politically to raise driving cost. This radical solution needs a number of breakthrough technologies. The first is a calendar plugin to record your commuting pattern. So on Monday you could put down you walk to work, on Tuesday you took the train, on Wednesday you took the bus, and so forth. So this is web-based self-reporting which was pioneered by Genentech for a commute incentives program where in fact employees under collect by about 20%. And once you have this calendar in place, then some autofill applets are part of the breakthrough. 
where when you use a transit fare card, that transaction automatically populates your Tuesday and Wednesday calendars for when you took the train and we took the bus. And eventually, we'll have computers at parking lots, which will talk to cars to report whether you SOB'd or you carpooled. And there's a budget obstacle at most companies with no budget for uh, doing fancy solutions by adding parking gates or asphalt changes, and this solution avoids that. In addition, the combination of $2 charge and $4 incentives is revenue neutral to employees, um, and that's important as well. Another breakthrough technology is a monthly dashboard. And this starts for employees with reporting whether you uh, owe money for the month. And this data is then swept into your paycheck. And there will also be a company-wide dashboard that will foster competition between companies for better commuting. Another breakthrough technology is the mobility ecosystem. So there's a lot of great smartphone applications for transportation out there, a lot of new technologies. But many of the services are struggling right now, and this solution adds 23 million new green commuters to use those services. In addition, all these services reduce the need to own cars, so it can transform society in that sense. And we're seeing that 20-somethings want to buy a lot fewer cars than their parents, so this further reinforces that transformation. These technologies have a large total addressable market. There's many new enterprise computing transactions, large increase in revenue for green commuting, new funding for the mobility services market, huge increase in infill real estate development, and benefits from cutting driving from fewer crashes, etc. A lot of computers in a box, and benefits from reducing carbon. So to review where we are, We've hit the required elements and now we're on to human psychology to help convince you that this solution will be effective. The comments from moving cooler and MTC were helpful so far, but let's dig in a little bit. To carrots and sticks. So for humans, finding a $100 bill on the sidewalk has a small impact compared to losing $100, which is actually a very big impact. So sticks and pains and losses are really good at motivating humans. So if you just have a program with incentives only for commuting, um, it's not very cost effective at all. And the problem is that small carrots are ignored. And we've seen many examples where sticks or parking charges are very effective. MTC has already talked about a huge difference in commuting. And there's a database of eight studies from best, place, best workplaces for commuters with 23% uh, fewer cars per 100 jobs. And the price elasticity of demand also forecasts that this solution will provide a 23% reduction. And carrots and combined with sticks work where carrots alone don't. So there's a couple examples. One was at 20th Century Corporation in Los Angeles. They started with incentives that didn't work. They added a $30 per month parking charge and SOB went way down. And at CH2M Hill in Bellevue, Washington, they started with incentives that didn't work and they added a $40 per month parking charge and that cut commuting way down. So for humans switching from SOB has got a high barrier and these parking charges irritate psychologically and gnaw on people over time and wear their resistance to commute alternatives down. So and the combination of charges plus incentives creates a difference of $1,400 per year, which is pretty substantial, and yet the solution is a lot more sellable than a solution with $6 per day charges and $0 per day incentives. Let's talk about how humans perceive long versus short-term optimization. So there's clearly a short-term benefit to SOV commuters from avoiding this solution, but a long-term gain to everyone from cost-effectively protecting the climate. So some survey research was conducted to debate this issue with the survey respondent, explaining some of the things that already were covered in this PowerPoint, but also including some of the objections raised by corporate commute staff against the solution, such as uh, Yahoo had said they would never penalize employees by charging for parking, they will only use incentives, and that was included. And the survey actually found that 
the majority chose long-term optimization. So in fact, there was some political support for this kind of program. The last piece of psychology deals with cheating. And cheating is where you report that you biked to collect $4 when you actually SOB'd. And the first six bullets give arguments on why cheating is unlikely. So for example, bullet six talks about there's a big risk to your reputation if you're caught cheating that makes it not worthwhile to cheat. And in the event that a company experienced lots of cheating, then there are a number of remedies to reduce cheating. So thanks for viewing this moonshot.